Hey guys, Brooke Whipple here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm talking about all of my favorite winter gear, all of my little essentials that I bring with me. I get so many questions every video. What are your boots? What's your hat? What about your coat? Tell me about your sleeping bag. So today, that's what we're talking about. Stay tuned. Want a treat? You want a treat to get started? That's a good girl, there you go. All right guys, we're gonna jump right into it, but first, I wanna say thank you to my sponsor for this video, Stagger Mucklucks. These are the only boots I recommend. I'm gonna talk about them in a minute. Before we get started, I keep wanting to bring this up. I, I get lots of letters and notes from you guys, and I keep forgetting to say thank you. I read each and every one, and I really appreciate you taking the time to send me a letter, send me a note of encouragement. I really appreciate that. So I just wanna say thank you for all the letters. Keep them coming. All right, like I said, first thing I'm gonna do is talk about my boots. I get endless questions about my boots. All right, I've been wearing Steger Mucklucks for 21 years. This is only my second pair. First pair I got in 1998, it was a gift. I had no idea how valuable this gift would be to me for the rest of my life because Steger Mucklucks are the only boots that keep me warm. Now, I want you to take a look at them because they're very unique boots. First of all, it's just a canvas upper, completely canvas, and then this is moose hide. It's got a moose hide uh, leather all around like the bottom part. So you've got canvas and moose hide, and then on the bottom is a rubberized traction bottom. Now inside of the boot, all it is inside is a felt wool liner. And then inside additionally, I have an extra layer of wool felt on the very bottom. I had my first pair for 18 years. And then I bought these new, this new pair a couple years ago just cause uh, I had a little bit of extra money and I was heading to Mongolia for a loan season five. So I've had these about three seasons now. Um, just amazing. These are like the Arctic Expedition um, style boots that they have. They come in all different colors, all different styles. These are just the most amazing boots I've ever had. Okay, I'm coming from Alaska, Mongolia, Michigan. These boots in Alaska, bunny boots did not keep my feet warm. Any other type of boot never kept my foot warm. These boots work because they breathe. With all the canvas and the moose hide at the bottom, they allow your feet to breathe and they're very roomy. The other thing is they're very, very flexible. Right, I mean, I feel like I'm walking in a slipper. I've actually climbed peaks in these boots in the winter time, and they're just amazing. Now, obviously, these work best in like a more dry cold, more dry snow. So come spring and break up time, you know, if it's a really wet, heavy snow, I mean, I've still worn them, but they're gonna get wet. I, I do have a waterproofing spray on mine that came from Steger. Uh, that I bought with my boots that you spray on. It helps just to kind of waterproof the uh, moose hide a little, but you don't want to like slather any kind of other waterproofing wax or anything on them because you do want that breathability factor. That's what's going to keep your feet warm. So when it comes time for spring and break up, it's time to put the mucklucks away, but they are going to keep your feet warm. I promise you. So I highly recommend these boots. If you want to check them out, the link is below. Go to the website, check out their boots. They're a little different than your regular boots. So go check out their sizing guidelines, get the right size, do yourself a favor and buy a pair of boots that you are going to have for literally decades. There's absolutely nothing wrong with my original pair. I sold them on eBay and I probably got like $70 out of just my used 18 year old mucklucks, okay? So they hold their value. People know that these are good boots and you are gonna love them. I guarantee it. All right, now I hiked in here and um, I was really warm so now I'm getting cold. I'm gonna talk about gloves and coats real quick so I'm gonna put mine on. So when it comes to coats, I really like a combination of materials. Now I'm very traditional with my gear. I tend to stick to cotton, canvas, uh, wool, and down. Those are really the four big um, fabrics that I use. I also like flannel, you might have noticed that. So I'm gonna grab a coat. Uh, a lot of people ask about this coat, I wear it a lot. This is a vintage Woolrich blanket coat. I found this at a yard sale. 
believe it or not. I bought this for $20 a long time ago. And then look at this rough. This rough, you're not gonna believe the story. I, I put this rough on the coat, it didn't, it didn't come with it. But uh, at the Fairbanks dump, you know, you never know what you're gonna find. I found this leather coat one day hanging over the side of the dumpster. And look what it had on it, it had this beautiful rough. This is beaver, this is either, uh, looks like wolf here. I got this rough off another coat and sewed it on this one. <laughs> An amazing find. Yeah, Fairbanks dump, you can just, like, there's a recycling area, and then people just leave stuff on the sides of dumpsters too. Like, we take all of our trash there, and then you can just kind of forage. So, it's super cool. I wear this a lot, I just love it. And yeah, that's where it came from. And you know, what's nice to layer under wool is a nice light down coat. Something like this, nice, really light, packable down coat would be perfect layered underneath this. So uh, I got this for five bucks at a thrift store. You just gotta keep your eyes open, guys. I mean, this stuff can be found. You don't have to spend a ton of money. And uh, it's just good stuff to wear, keep you nice and warm. And, and you know, layering up is the best thing to do anyway. Oh, okay, I gotta get my gloves on, my hands are freezing. You've heard the story, maybe you haven't. So these are my, my favorite winter gloves. Pinko is just a leather glove that has, uh, they're insulated inside. I like leather because I'm handling, you know, dealing with the fire a lot and cooking on the fire. So these are great. I, the mushers in Alaska use this glove a lot. I it into the fire the other day, burnt the cuff off of this one, but it still works. I just need a new pair, but I hate to get rid of good gloves. Um, once you wear, wear in a pair of gloves, like I just hate to get rid of them. You know, I'll tape my gloves up when I get little holes in the fingers. And you know, they, they just fit me, right? They fit like a glove, like they, they formed my hand. So I'm hesitant to get a new pair yet. I'm still like gonna, I'm gonna just monkey with these still, even though I got a short cuff, but. Yeah, so when I get, when I get a hole and stuff, I just take, uh, usually electrical tape, put it around the uh, fingers. I see I need more here, but those are my gloves, Kinko gloves. That's, that's what I like to wear. The other thing I like is if I don't have my insulated pair, just my, my plain pair of leather gloves. These are the most beautiful pair of leather gloves I've ever had. These come from the Prospector in Fairbanks. It's a, it's a rugged outdoor store. Um, same place I get my hat, by the way. A lot of people ask about my hat. This is my wool hat right up here. This is birch bark from the Yukon River. I made a little hat band out of it and uh, stitched it on with some leather. And then this is a feather, a barred owl feather. I know everyone's gonna yell at me because that's like, oh, it's illegal to have a barred owl feather and you know, blah, blah, blah. I just don't care. I didn't hurt the bird, I found the feather. And you know, come, come get me, arrest me. I don't know, I'm kind of a jerk about that, I guess. I like my feathers, I'm such a feather girl. I have one sub and maybe you're watching. Um, he calls me uh, four feathers. A uh, long time ago I was in a video uh, picking up a bunch of turkey feathers and I just kept sticking them in my hat and I ended up with four feathers that day and he called me four feathers so it's kind of cool. I love feathers. I love this feather in my hat and I'm not changing it. So that's my story. But um, just for the record, this is a turkey feather. Okay. More hats and stuff. Uh, if you're sleeping in your bag at night, it's nice to have some kind of a beanie. You know, again, this is a Merrill beanie, but I didn't pay money. Like, I got this at a thrift store. The other cool thing to have are these buffs. You might have heard of these buffs. They're fleece on top, and then there's just like real loose, stretchy material down here. They I mean, just go over your neck. They're like just a giant neck warmer, and you can do all sorts of things up with them. You know, put them way up under your head so only like your face is showing. You can wear these under helmets and stuff. So these are nice to have in really cold weather. My other two favorite hats. I'm sure you've seen me wear these a lot. I'm a huge fan of Stormy Cromers. These are wool hats. They are actually made in Escanaba, Michigan. They are a legendary hat, been around forever. And this is a brand new one. I just got this one. There's the brand, Stormy Cromer. Uh, I wanted one with the plaid. I've, I had a vintage red one that I usually wear, but I got this, this plaid one recently. And I love these. They're all wool with a little cotton liner. This flap goes down over your ears. So a lot of people ask about this, where'd you get your hat? I made this hat, um, just a wool, wool on the outside, flannel liner. So there's natural cotton uh, lining 
with wool and flannel on the inside. The, the pelt came from a lynx that a friend of mine got in the Brooks Range. That's how he supports himself. He tanned this himself and then I bought the pelt from him and used it to make my hat. Now this hat is amazing because I bet it doesn't weigh four ounces. This is so light. A lot of, a lot of fur hats are really heavy. Um, so this is really a, a, just a beautiful light fur hat that I made for myself. Um, I've made all my family for hats, except for Belle, she didn't want one. This is my my uh, my favorite hat because it's so light, it's so warm, and it, it's got you know, I'm, I'm deeply connected to it because because of the you know the fur and where it came from, and I made it myself. So anytime I can make gear myself, you know, I'd love to do that, and I'm sure a lot of you do too. Oh, so this is a cool, you know, I'm always on the lookout. I'm such a coat girl. I have a lot of coats, but here's another cool wool coat that I. I just recently picked this up um, at an antique store, believe it or not. Uh, it had a little vintage vintage uh, booth in there and they were selling this cool coat. So you might be seeing me wear this here soon. It's wool with just cotton liner, just like I like it. So there's my newest thrift store coat. All right, might as well talk about seating. It's really nice to have something to sit on around the fire, especially in the winter. So I like my little, this is my little cheapo tripod, you know, stool, which is really, really handy. This year I splurged and I bought this Helinox chair. Um, amazing. This, this weighs like less than a pound, folds right up. These are aluminum legs. And what's great about this is you can actually, you can have a back. And, and let me tell you, on Alone Season 4 and Alone Season 5, one of the things, Dave too, we've talked about this. Hi baby, give me kisses, thank you. Daisy's here with us too. Hi sweetheart, you want a treat? You want a treat? Do you twirl? Good girl. One of the things we miss the most, I miss the most, was something to lean back on. You do not realize how much you miss a chair until you go weeks and weeks and weeks without one. Oh, you just want to lean back on something. So this chair, this was definitely a splurge. They're not cheap. They're over a hundred dollars and, but they're so light and it's just once in a while I take them with me. I got to have a chair with a back. I mean, it's a luxury definitely. So this was a splurge for me. I don't usually buy uh, expensive gear. So there you go. That was my, my splurge last summer. The other essential thing to have in winter, especially if you don't have a chair, is just a piece of closed cell foam. Closed cell foam is so amazing. You get it, you're making your fire, you set this on the ground. You know, anytime you just need to kneel down on the ground, process some firewood, do whatever, you got a piece of closed cell foam. I don't have any more treats, you're done. Go buy a, a roll of foam pad, you know, just a sleeping pad and just cut it up. I mean, they don't cost much. Uh, literally probably got this at a yard sale and cut it up from that. So yeah, these are invaluable and they don't weigh anything. All right, speaking of closed cell foam, let's go into like my sleep system for the winter. You definitely have to be off the ground. As far as closed cell foam pads, these are my favorite right here. This is a Thermarest Z-Lite. So this is like a three quarter length and I love that like, you know, the traditional rolls of foam, like they're just kind of unwieldy when you're putting them, getting them out and putting them away. So I love this Z fold. It just goes bam, throw it in your pack or strap it on the outside. They don't weigh anything. These are great. This one's got like the silver reflective coating to get, get some of that heat bouncing back on you. Now this by itself is great, but I'm getting older and I kind of like more cushion. <laughs> so. I've got my Outdoorsman Lab inflatable mattress. You've probably seen me uh, use this in videos. Highly recommend an inflatable pad, but you have to use this with it. These, this alone, at least this one, will not keep you warm in the winter. Now, summer's not a problem, but in winter, you gotta have more insulation than just this air pad. So I pair these together in the winter and it, it just works great, keeps me very warm. Now, this one's gonna be a shocker, okay? This is the most amazing sleeping bag I've ever had, but it is insanely expensive. Now this is a Marmot Coombe CWM, and this is a 40 below 
down bag. It's amazingly beautiful to sleep in. This thing is about, um, I, I believe it's less than five pounds, but for winter camping, this is like sleeping in heaven. I'm never, I've never been cold in this bag. This bag, I paid $600 for. Now, I bought this when I was going to Mongolia for Alone Season 5. They gave us a little bit of a gear allowance that we could use. So that money went towards buying this sleeping bag. Otherwise, there's no way I would have bought this sleeping bag. If you're gonna, if you're serious about camping in the winter, you do want to invest in a good down bag. It doesn't have to be like this one, but go, go do your research. Find a good down sleeping bag. One, you know, I sleep cold, so you know yourself. You know how cold you're gonna get, and get a bag that's rated for you. But I highly recommend down in the winter. It's gonna keep you much more, much warmer than a synthetic. Although the synthetic bags these days are really, the technology is, is really amazing. So they're really coming a long way on, on the loft and the materials and keeping you warm. So if you're in a wetter environment, you know, go with a synthetic bag, but, but you can't beat down. And this bag, it's my favorite, but you know, hey, you gotta be about a millionaire to buy this bag. <laughs> Luckily it was, it was uh, kind of part of my deal being on the show, so I got lucky. I'll never sell this bag. I, I, this is my, my pride and joy. Research down bags. Get one that fits you and your budget. The other thing that's a luxury and I really do like it is um, a pillow, right? Having a pillow is, is amazing. You know, it's, you can take your gear and your sweater or whatever and put it on it, but you're not going to get a good night's sleep probably. So I've got... Um, I'm getting fancy, guys. Uh, my gear, right? I've got an inflatable pillow. Look at that. It's the Alps Mountaineering. Really cool pillow, and you can just, it's got an amazing valve, just like the valve on my sleeping mattress. It's, it's that simple. It's just an in and out, um, so it makes it really easy to deal with. So, having a pillow, being a little more comfortable summer or winter. Oh man, I'm a huge fan of safety and first aid kits. It's kind of my deal, right? I'm wilderness first responder certified. So having a great first aid kit is essential. If you're in a group, especially you want a really good one like this, this is from Survivewear, and you cannot beat these first aid kits. This is the most unique first aid kit I've ever come across. You open it up and everything is labeled. These are absolutely amazing. Now, I don't have it in here at the moment because it's in another pack I've had, but if you buy this big one, it also comes with a smaller one that, you know, is more for backpacking and such, which I also have. But um, highly recommend Survive Wear uh, first aid kits. Go check them out. The link is below. They've been a past sponsor of mine and they are wonderful. Be prepared with first aid, get some training, be ready for the unexpected. As far as saws, I like my Agawa Canyon saw. This is a foldable saw and it is sharp, comes with an extra blade. Innovative design. Watch, watch how this thing comes together. This drops out, bring it back, and it simply snaps in. Awesome little portable bow saw. Um, so when I am traveling, backpacking, rafting, canoeing, whatever. This is the one I take. Otherwise, I take just a regular full-size bow saw. Agawa Canyon. Great. All right, if I'm gonna take a hatchet, I'm bringing this one. This is a vintage Norland. This belonged to my grandfather. Nice little hatchet to have. If I'm gonna do more serious, um, long-term kind of survival type camping, I'm gonna take a full-size ax. But for something small, that's the one I take. A lot of you ask about my ferro rods. This is the one that was used on season four and five of Alone. We, uh, we put the, the little plastic piece on there. It did come with a hole pre-drilled. We just got this off eBay, just this single piece. This is a 5 8 inch by 6 inch ferro rod and just a piece of steel. And actually, this is a piece of uh, elastic off my coat from season five because you couldn't have any kind of cordage. So once we got into the field, I took this piece off my coat so I'd never, so I'd always have it attached to my ferro rod. And you simply just, you know, use your striker 
or you can use your knife on these. You guys know I always have a knife on me. This happens to be one that my husband Bush Radical made me. Uh, nice flamed maple handle. I need to clean it up a little, but you can also use the back of your knife for your striker. So I always have my knife on me on my belt and always have this nice big ferro rod. Got just this on eBay. Go search on eBay to get the size you want or any other, you know, survival prepper website's gonna have ferro rods, but the bigger it is, the easier it is to use. So if you're new to it, get a big one. <clears throat> now, a lot of times I'll wear uh, these necklaces, one or the other, but this one here has uh, a ferro, little tiny ferro rod right there with a ceramic striker. Now, I, I sell these in my Etsy store. These are like boho chic, you know, uh, secret survival necklaces. So no one really knows that you are so cool that you could make fire uh, at any moment, even though you're looking so great. <laughs> looking so hot. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I wear a lot is my little medicine pouch. And I literally do have two ibuprofens in here. So that's what I carry. If, I don't, if I'm not carrying like any first aid kit or anything, I usually wear my little medicine pouch. I made this out of my own deer skin. So this was a deer that I shot with my bow and then I tanned the hide myself. A little medicine pouch I made out of it. Uh, I sell both of these in my Etsy store, link below. <sighs> a lot of times I will have just a bandana and in my bandana, I've got birch bark and uh, tinder type material. And you can see in there is all kinds of birch bark. And I've, I'm sure I've got some pitch and cedar in there too. I, I just, I don't know, I kind of like it in a bandana. Uh, back to my clothing a little bit. I just looked down and realized I get a lot of comments about my pants. Everybody wants to know where I got my pants. These are thrift store pants. They're 98% cotton, 2% spandex, and uh, they're just, these are just, you know, regular, regular pants I found at the thrift store. What I did is I sewed on my own patches and my own pockets here. So I, I, I just wanted that extra protection on my knees and I like having some pockets here. So I did that myself. I've done that to other pairs of pants too. So if you're seeing me wearing those type of pants, uh, I made them myself. But I'm a big fan of canvas, cotton canvas or cotton pants or corduroy. I just don't like synthetic material. I, I'm a northern girl. It's usually going to be cold. You know, those synthetic materials that, you know, dry really quickly and they're really light. I just feel like they're going to rip right out on me. I just don't feel like they're sturdy. All those pants, synthetic shell coats and, and stuff like that. I'm just not a huge fan. These are pants I wore on season four and season five. So these pants have spent seven straight weeks in a rain for a cold rainforest type environment. The idea that, you know, oh, cotton kills and stuff. Well, that is true to a point that if you didn't have a fire to dry out, if you didn't have a way to, to dry out at all, you're going to suffer when your cotton clothes gets wet. Anytime our clothes got even damp or wet, we just go stand by the fire. Just dry your stuff out by the fire. We did absolutely fine with our cotton pants. I'm gonna stick by that for forever. <laughs> so you're not ever gonna see me wearing like the fancy synthetic um, hiking pants and the zip off pants and it's just not my gig. I just don't like it. Underneath these pants I have on some insulated fleece, long underwear. I'm also a fan of merino wool base layers. It's really, really soft and um, thin, but gonna keep you really warm. It's not flammable, you know, either. That's the, that's the thing about synthetics too that I don't like is they're really flammable. You get a spark on them, they got an instant hole, uh, and, and it sticks to your skin and burns you. When this cuff fell in the fire, I grabbed it out and a bunch of material got on my hand. And boy, I had a really bad burn there for a couple weeks because this is, it's, there's a lot of plastic in the cuff of this of this glove, so uh, I'm not a fan of synthetics. Um, the other thing that's great to have here um, is a shemog, and I, I love wearing my shemog. You just kind of wrap it around yourself, and they're just great um, to keep you warm. Uh, I'm a big fan of wool socks. The other cool thing, wool socks are great for putting hot rocks into and sleeping with them. So put a, put a rock in a fire, get it really nice and hot. That's where the leather gloves come in because you can pick up that rock. Stick it inside your sock. Stick it on your belly, stick it on your chest, stick it in your toes. I mean, on Alone Season 4, I slept with four hot rocks every night. 
I had all my socks occupied with hot rocks uh, because it was so important to, to just try to be warm. So big fan of wool socks. I've got wool socks on right now underneath my boots. Another option for layering. Uh, I love a wool anorak. Now these are just kind of like a big oversized, you know, almost like a hoodie, but it's got this kangaroo pouch. Now this was sent to me by a subscriber. This is a wonderful anorak. This is made by The Wandering Parson. You can go check out his Etsy store, The Wandering Parson. I'll put his name and link below if I can find him if he's still on there, but wonderful to layer up a wool anorak with maybe like that light down coat that I have. So stuff like this, big fan of wool. Again, a nice wool sweater. I like them kind of oversized and big. Dave has one just like this. A lot of people think I always steal his sweater, but this one's mine. <laughs> just 100% pure wool, layer it up, and it's just so warm. You just can't go wrong with wool. Now, let's talk about some cooking gear that I really can't live without, as you've probably seen me use quite a bit. This little Stanley cook kit here is just amazing. Just look, it's just so tiny and portable. Flips back and opens up. And they have these great cups in them. And anybody that I've known who has had one of these little Stanley cook kits, they just love the cup and so do I. Like you can hang on to these and it keeps stuff warm and it doesn't burn your hand. But I just love these cups, they're the, they're the greatest. So I love my little Stanley, uh, little tiny cook pot. You know, I'm kind of the old school girl. I've got this tiny little, I mean, tiny little aluminum pot that I use, but I can't find it right now. So uh, I'm using this. Gotta have a thermos to pour your hot coffee in. And this is the one I like. I like these hydro flasks, just the small ones. This is just 12 ounce. The very, very best coffee filter I have found is this GSI Outdoors coffee filter. You just open up like that. Put your filter and your coffee. Oh, I can smell coffee on this filter. <laughs> just put your coffee in there, pour the hot water over, drips right into your mug. I mean, folds up snaps back with the uh, the little protector here. It's great for the pack. Um, I've, I've tried a lot of coffee filters. Uh, if you've been watching this channel for very long, you've seen me spill a lot of coffee with different filters. This is the one, this one I don't spill. This one's great. I'm only recommending this because I like it and it's just the only one I have, this little cook kit. I ended up finding at a thrift store, brand new, still in the package. It's called Light My Fire and it's just handy. I just really like it. Uh, it's just got a couple of compartments, a couple of bowls. A couple of little little bowls inside. It also comes with a spork, which I uh, forgot to throw in there to show you. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a nice little kit. I, I like it, so it's the only one I have. It's the one I use. I love, love my Stanley flask. These things are great. It's got a wide mouth. Put some wine in there. Have a little beverage after dinner. It's nice. The grill that I use all the time, my little backpacking grill. Um, this is a, what is the brand of this? Like a Coglins or Hamper? I forget, anyway. It's in my, all this, a lot of this stuff is in my Amazon store. The link is below. You just go to that, that link, hit it, and you're gonna see a lot of this gear all in one place for you to check out. And the cool thing is, if you do buy anything from that store, um, through those links, it, it helps support my channel. I get a little bit of a commission off of those sales. So uh, yeah, I appreciate in advance if you end up doing that, but this little grill, oh, love this. I cook right on it. I cook steaks on here. I get my pots and my pans on here. This is really great just for cooking. If you're, if you're a cooking nerd like me, you're gonna like that. It's really cheap. As far as freeze dried food, I'm a fan of a couple different companies. One is Mountain House, and the second one is Backpacker's Pantry. Um, this, they make really good meals. I mean, I really like them, and they have such a wide variety. Highly recommend Mountain House and Backpacker's Pantry. Now, as far as lighting, you gotta have a good headlamp. There's so many good headlamps out there. I have, I've got like three or more. Uh, this Petzl's a really good one. Um, it's got lots of different settings. So just find one that you like and uh, go with it. But don't go anywhere without a headlamp. It's so crucial to have light, especially hands-free light. So get a headlamp. The other cool lights I have, you've probably seen me light up the place, is uh, you know you can buy these inflatable lanterns. And these are solar powered. So they got a little solar panel here. Click the light. But this thing here I use a lot. This is the Luminoodle. Now you've probably seen this in my videos. It's the strip lights that I use to light my scene. 
it's a strip of light that you plug into a battery pack and lights up. Super cool, let me show you what it looks like. The downside is you need to carry uh, a battery pack as well, but for me, I can't film without light, so it's really important. This is my battery pack. So yeah, it's just this beautiful strip of lights that I can use to light my scene, light my campsite, light my tent up. Um, having more light than just a headlamp is just so great, especially if you're alone. It's really just helps you feel better about being out in the dark at night. So I love my Luminoodle, recommend that. So guys, I wanna know what, what your favorite winter gear is. If you have some recommendations for me, maybe you've used some of this stuff. Leave your comments below, guys. You can learn from each other in the comment section about gear and good stuff for winter. I also wanna know about some upcoming trips you got going on. I wanna know if you're getting outside and getting happy. Are you? All right, that's gonna do it for me. Hope you liked this video. Go check out Steger Mucklucks, the best boots ever, link below. And until next time, guys, this is Girl in the Woods. She gone. Oh, and don't forget to get outside and get happy. My feet are happy. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm getting out, I'm happy.